Hello there, everybody. My name is Adam from Powerbelt 3D, and welcome to the second edition of the assembly guide for the Powerbelt 3D Zero. Every section of the assembly process is broken out into its own video, and I will make sure to put all of the videos into a playlist. If you happen to be watching this video on its own, I'll make sure to link to the playlist in the description of this video. That way you can watch it all the way through step by step, start to finish, and make sure everything is in the correct order. I organized the build to go more or less right in order from easiest to increasingly more complex so that you can kind of ease your way into it. That being said, the build is pretty involved, so you should give yourself in between one full day up to a full weekend, kind of depending on your level of experience with this sort of thing. So when I get a new 3D printer or furniture, any kind of kit really, I tend to get excited and just want to rip into everything and then kind of figure out how it goes together on the fly. But I recognize a lot of you are not going to be like that. So if you're out there and you like to have everything in its place before you get started, um, one, I respect you and I'm only a tiny bit jealous of your organizationalness. So you will need the following things in order to make your life as easy as possible while you put together your Powerbelt 3D Zero. First and foremost, patience. There are a lot of steps that go into building this printer, but at the end of the day, the results can be fantastic once it's all put together. Second, you will need a set of hex keys, a drill, a drill bit slightly smaller than three millimeters in diameter, a socket wrench, an eight millimeter or similar size socket for that socket wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, probably a couple different sizes, a small flathead screwdriver, and a mallet. Other things that would be helpful would also be pliers, again ideally of a couple different sizes, and a set of wire cutters and or wire strippers. With that being said, we can get started on our first sub-assembly of this build. If you have any questions or run into some problems, uh, you can do a couple different things. First, we have a Facebook group exclusive for people who have built these machines and are actively using them. Second, you can always reach out to us via the contact form on the homepage of our website. I will do my best to give you tips and tricks if you run into any problems. With that, happy printing, and let's get started.